Hello everyone, Captain Sarcastic here. And yes, this is that video. So, for years, for a few years now, ever since Spider-Man Far From Home came out, people have been wondering, what was next? What happened? And, as you may have already known, a few days ago, Spider-Man No Way Home came out. And I watched it. And now I'm going to state this. First half of the video is going to be non-spoilers. Second half of the video is going to be spoilers. Okay. Um, let me get this out the, the way. This is hands down the best movie of 2021. I've heard some people say Dune. No. This is the best movie of 2021. This is the best superhero movie, period. Or be more precise, best Marvel movie, period. This rav rivals Zack Snyder's Justice League. <sighs> this movie is a goddamn roller coaster ride. And I mean that in a good way. <laughs> like. There are several moments of this movie where I squeed. I actually squeed. With excitement. And I'll get to those later. In the video. Whew. This was one of those that I was excited for. I knew it was going to be hectic. That I knew it was going to be good. And... My god, I was not disappointed. I enjoyed every single second of this movie. There was no scene where I thought it was like too drawn out or too cringy or too lighthearted. It didn't have a specific tone. Like, this movie was like an entire roller coaster of tones. Like, it changed from lighthearted to dark. Real fast. It's like a bipolar film. Is what I can describe it. It goes from lighthearted. And funny. To dark and really fucking depressing. Pretty quickly. Especially with the soundtrack. Um. Let's see. The acting. In the film. Is on point, especially that of Tom Holland's. Um, given the uh, circumstances he has to work with in film, um, the suits look incredible. Especially the the new suit Spidey gets in the movie looks sick. Okay, I think now it's time we get to the spoilers. This movie, let me get this out the gate already, right here and now. Yes, Daredevil, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, Tom McGuire Spider-Man, all appear in this movie. And so do all the villains from the previous Spider-Man iterations. So we got Sandman, Green Goblin, Doc Ock. Electro, Lizard. And the thing I was kind of worried about from the trailer was like, they said that each character had died from their iteration of Spider-Man, but no. No. These are exactly after. These are the exact, they follow the exact trajectories that these characters faced at the end of Amazing, at, at the end of their films. So like, Lizard went to prison, but faced Spider-Man again and got killed. Electro died when he imploded at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Green Goblin, impaled by his glider. Doc Ock, sacrificed himself to destroy the machine. Sandman is the only character that doesn't actually, that didn't end up dead. And they follow that because at first he's he first helps 
Tom Holland Spider-Man before realizing, oh shit, you are not the version of Peter Parker I know. Who the fuck are you supposed to be? And I love it. And the thing I love even most is they didn't just bring in Andrew Garfield and Tommy McGuire and have them play wildly different versions of the characters. No. They brought back those versions of their characters. Suit, personality, and all. And I love it. And I love how there was even a scene in the movie that kind of emphasizes how much different every version of Spider-Man has been. How much version different Tom Holland's is compared to the originals being Tom Holland Spider-Man is the only one that knows how to work on a team. <laughs> so, there's a scene in the movie where they're all fighting against the bad guys and they're just screwing each other up because none of them... The only person that knows how to work on a team is Tom Holland Spidey. And they have to call each other by numbers. Because they're like, Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man 3. Just because there's three different versions of Spider-Man. And <laughs> there's actually a scene in the movie <laughs> where they all answer to being Peter Parker or being Spider-Man. <laughs> So it's like, okay, hey, Spider-Man. Yes? Okay, okay. Peter Parker. Yes? <laughs> okay, the Spider-Man next to the computer. Oh, okay. I'm over here. <laughs> it is a good movie. And yes, it's got some funny moments to it. But it's also got some pretty damn dark ones. Now, I've already stated we're at the spoiler section. Ethan, do not watch this video. I know you haven't seen the movie yet. Do not watch this video. I know you watch my videos, man. Don't. Anywho. The dark and depressing bits. Whew. Those are the bits I was not expecting. Now, I kind of expected that me, Ethan... Me and Ethan had kind of speculated before the movie came out, and he still hasn't seen it yet. I have, which is why I said not to, for him not to watch this video. Um, we had already speculated that someone was going to die in this movie, just because of, just because people were saying it's better than End, it's gonna be better than Endgame, and just from all the trailers, we knew someone was gonna die. We, me and him, thought it was gonna be a Spider Man, actually. I personally thought it was going to be Tommy McGuire's Spider-Man. And towards the end, I actually thought that was actually going to come true, but no. If you haven't already watched the movie, I recommend doing so. This is where the big, one of the biggest spoilers happens. Um, Aunt May dies. And the way they do it, god damn. There are very few movies that have made me cry. Infinity War, Endgame, and The Warrior. Those are the few movies that have made me cry. Now we can add No Way Home to that list because her death had me in tears because she was completely fucking oblivious to what was going on, to her dying. She was completely oblivious to it. She didn't realize that she was hurt or even dying to begin with. And that broke me. Jesus Christ, Marvel. Well done on that one. People think that you guys are known for being like the lighthearted kid friendly. But god damn, you can go dark whenever you really want to. Whew. And the fact that it, it, it was Tommy Guire's villain. That ends up getting into Tom Holland's head the worst. It wasn't Mysterio. No, Mysterio just fucked up his life a little. Green Goblin took away the one thing Peter Parker had left. The one member of family Peter Parker had left. 
So, people been wondering when you're going to see a very pissed off Peter Parker. Oh, you get to fucking see one. And, oh, oh boy. I had been wanting to see Angry Peter Parker. But funny enough, Angry Peter Parker actually scared me. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, Daredevil appears in the show. In the movie. But, it's only a little cameo. And it kind of teases. Just, I love how there's a little tease of him revealing his powers on accident. Just, <laughs> How the hell did you do that? I'm a really good lawyer. <laughs> Anywho. Um, let's see. Andrew Garfield with Spider-Man. He was, funny enough, the character I was most excited to see. Because... I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I mentioned this on several occasions. Andrew Garfield was my favorite version of Spider-Man. Is and always will be. And my God, they get they did my boy justice. Not just my boy P Andrew Garfield, but also his villains. I if you didn't already know, people didn't really much care for the Amazing Spider-Man films. Not only because they thought the CGI was not that great and be honest with you, as much as I love them, people are right. I mean, Electro was pretty comically bad. Pretty laughably bad. But the film itself, films itself were pretty good. Yes, the writing was shit. I'll admit that. But you got to admit, they got the character of Spider-Man right. Better than all the other live-action versions of Spider-Man. And his introduction or reintroduction into No Way Home is just straight up perfect. <laughs> it is just, you can't tell, if it wasn't for the fact that he was talking to MJ and Ned, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between No Way Home and that scene from No Way Home and a scene from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Like, you could genuinely think it's from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Is that they nailed it that good. And then they brought in Tommy Wire Spider-Man. And, funny enough, No Way Home actually made me like Tommy Wire Spider-Man. They actually did it. I liked how he... His, not just his style, but even his voice and look had changed. He went from the Peter Parker I kind of disliked from the Spider-Man, no, the Raimi films, to a Spider-Man that's like, okay, okay, I can get behind wise mentor Spidey. I can get behind Uncle Ben Spidey. Oh, and another thing that I got, I, I, I'd like to say that I, that I, about goddamn time on. You know how people were so excited, so hyped whenever uh, Avengers, when Captain America finally said Avengers Assemble? God, I, I bet the theater erupted whenever they, somebody finally fucking said with great power comes great responsibility to Spider-Man. <laughs> All right. Sorry. That was bugging me. Anywho. Uh, itch. Anywho. They finally said it. Not once, but twice. By two different people. First time said by Aunt May. Second time said by Tommy McGuire. And it worked. It actually works. From the context of the film. It works. 
Now, there's no point talking about spoilers unless we talk about the ending. The ending, I love how it still sets up a sequel while simultaneously ending a story. And not only that, but also sets up a more comic-accurate Spider-Man. Like, you all know, my biggest problem with the previous Spider-Man films, the Homecoming and Far From Home, with Tom Holland Spider-Man was, he didn't feel too much like Spider-Man, he just felt like Iron Man, Iron Man Jr. with webs. Because he had such an over-goddamn reliance on Stark technology. In this one, no, not really. Not really. Yeah, he, he wears the suit that he made with the Stark 3 and 3 printer, but no. The only thing he uses Stark tech for is as a story plot point now. As a, okay, I can use this in order to help people thing. Like, okay, I can work with that. As long as he's not using it to help himself in battle, that's fine. But they go even further to retcon it. To just meta-universe retcon it. The ending... The best way to explain the ending is... After he, after they defeat all the bad guys, after they cure all the bad guys and send them back to their universe... In order to save the their Earth... Peter asks Doctor Strange to make, sure, to make it so nobody remembers that Peter Parker is... Who Peter Parker is. Not that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, just... Pe nobody remembers who Peter Parker is. So in other words, to everybody, Peter Parker doesn't exist anymore. Okay. That retcons it. So like, that adds the retcon of like, okay, so now Tony Stark never knew who Peter Parker was to begin with. Okay. So now he no longer has access to Stark technology. So what does he do? He builds himself. He hand makes himself an entire suit inspired by Raimi, Raimi Spider Man, and Mark Webb Spider Man. That was awesome. That is awesome. So not only do you guys set up an entirely new storyline, an entirely new era of Spider Man, but you just straight up retcon. Everything that people didn't much care for in your films. Well done. Well done. While also wrapping up an entire trilogy. This film felt like an entire spider web of interconnected events. Finally, finally meeting that point in the middle of the web. Is the best way to describe it. They finally meet the point in the middle of that web. And that is exciting to me. I'm excited to see what the next point, what the next interconnected web is going to be. And see how that connects to the previous web. Like, fair, subscribe if you enjoyed my review, and I'll see you guys later.